Hi, this video is about how I set up the 750 grain drill to drill Kernza, perennial wheatgrass. Um, Kernza is a pretty fluffy and a, a tiny grain. It's going to get drilled a half inch deep on seven and a half inch centers. And I've got 24 acres and there's 411 pounds of seed, which is 288 pounds of pure live seed. So that comes out to 17 pounds an acre. Um, that's a pretty tiny amount to put down. And I, and I need to be pretty accurate about this because I don't have a lot of way to get extra seed. So I, need, I want to be as precise as possible. This drill doesn't do very well on low seed amounts per acre. Um, there's a, an adjustment here. It goes from zero to 60, which moves the seed cups and opens them and closes them. Um, I ended up, the final setting on this side was at 14 and the other side was 16 in order to balance both sides. Without the half speed gears, that would have been down at not even half. It would have been six or seven and it's really hard to meter it out. So the first thing I did with the half speed gears, once I had that in, I blocked off all of the seed cups except for four. Here is one of them, and I put a bag over each of the four. There's one there, one there, and then there's two more on the other side. And then what I would do, to, at least to get a rough sense of it, first I used the wheat settings in the book, and that was, um, they suggested I should be down at four or five, but I ended up being at eight or nine initially. And my initial uh, run on this, I ended up with 8.7 8 pounds per acre. So what I would do, I would take the weight of the four bags, net, and would weigh them on the scale, and I would, I would net them out in here, and multiply by six. There's six, there's 24 rows on this. I'm only monitoring four. I'm collecting from four. So multiply that by, by six, and the way I covered the distance at first was to jack up this rear wheel underneath here. You gotta get on this piece of uh, tube Jack it up, and then the book tells you how many revolutions equal one acre. In this case, it's 363. I ended up doing 36 and a third, spinning it by hand as fast as I could to replicate the speed I'd be traveling. I did that two or three times, and, and actually I did it once, twice, and ended up first with, well, I was getting closer and closer. I can't see what this one is here, but I ended up at 14.9, then I bumped it up a little bit, and then finally, what I ended up doing was going out in the field with all four of these things bagged. And each time you have to reinitialize it to, to make sure there's enough seed in the tube, you know, so you're getting a full shot from the time you start at zero till the time you end up. But I went out into the field and with the GPS, I just made a line and then I came back and I monitored that distance and at the real time speed that I was going. And I'm happy with where that ends up. I'm at, according to this, 15.75 pounds per acre, and I'd rather be a little bit under than over. I've also got a loop monitor in here that supposedly will keep an eye on things for me. Um, it seems like a little bit of overkill, but I wanted to um, do a good job with the rate on this because there's such a light amount going down. Um, Jacking it up and spinning is no fun. I ended up using a, a stubby bottle jack. And there's a um, this piece of tube right under here. It was right under that tip. Ideally, I would have liked to have been on the, on the round tube housing, but there was no way to get under there and cup that. Uh, I found one video with a guy used a um, automotive jack with that little cup on it, and he went right under that that spot right there. Uh, well, I'll do the bottle jack on that. It seemed to do okay a few times that I had it up in the air. And the other thing, too, with these drills, of course, you've got to have the arm has got to be in the ground in order for this mechanism to engage. So the, these, these rocker shafts have got to be rotated down. So I just ended up opening up the, the pressure valve and letting the valves sink down. That causes the shaft back there, that black shaft, to rotate 45 degrees. And then when that rotates, there's an arm that's bolted to it right there that comes up here to this clutch. I think it's a what I call a clutch with those two offset plates in it. And then that rotates those so they line up. And then 
this outer shaft here driven by a chain from that back wheel will actually connect with this shaft over here which then goes back inside this outer shaft over to this gearbox and it goes from down here I'll just show you all the work I did I, I the solution I came up with for this it's just ugly you see I had to cut that corner out there because these are the half speed gears but in order to get this gear off that's on that shaft I mentioned that's got two sides to it that or is, you know, the internal and external sleeve. So that's being driven over here by that shaft when those clutch plates engage, and then that drives this bigger gear, which in turn, that shaft right there, I don't know if it went, got too blurry. Am I going too fast? Well, that's the shaft here, the upper shaft for the seed cups. Uh, I don't know what's going on with this camera. I guess I got a time limit or a memory limit or something. Well, you're going to get an impressionistic view. Thanks for uh, paying attention. Hopefully this helps somebody if they got to do Kernza. But you're going to see I had to chop that hole there because that spur gear, no way to get it off, it just comes straight out. And I ended up using an air hammer to drive that roll pin out that's in there that's holding it on the shaft with a roll pin uh, chisel, roll pin uh, air hammer. But all in all, looking good, and uh, here it is, 1st of September. We should drill this, and uh, it'll dry out in a day or so. Bye for now.